Good morning. I hope everyone had a good week and a happy Thanksgiving, and, and we're glad to be back today. Uh, we had a few calls this week concerning the numbers going up and, and things happening around us, and the committee uh, talked and, and decided that maybe we should take a few weeks off of in-person uh, services, and we will resume those on the 13th. Uh, we'll resume the, the in-person in services on the 13th if everything goes okay. So just remember that. Just make sure you reach out and call someone this week, touch base with them, let them know what's going on, and just see if they, if they need anything, let us know. We try to make sure that they, we take care of anything that, that anybody might need. Uh, every year at this time, we have the Christmas uh, card boxes out in the vestibule here, we're not going to be able to do that this year. Uh, this year, that'll be a little bit different uh, so that we won't have that available. Uh, remember the ones that we've been praying about the past few weeks. Uh, we seem like we've got a lot of sickness in our community and in our church. We just ask you that you just continue to, to remember all these we've been praying about. Remember the ones that's lost loved ones the past few weeks and, and, and just in the last few days, remember them. And we just ask you to just be with our church and our pulpit committee as we continue to work forward with that. So uh, with all that, and, and we just ask you to, to bear with us and help us to get through this. And, and with the Lord's will, we will. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the beautiful week you've given us, Lord. And we thank you for, for the opportunity to come here today. We just ask your blessings on all the ones that are taking part in the service today that you'll just bless their heart, Lord, and just lead, guide, and direct them. We ask you to be with Brother Jim today as he stands before us. Just, just give him the message you have us to have. Lord, we just ask you to be with our church and our community, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to be with our pulpit committee, that you'll just send us the man, Lord, that you have for us. Lord, we pray that you'll be with the many sick of our church and our community, Lord. It's ones we've been praying about for weeks, Lord. We just ask you to lay your healing and comforting hands on all these hearts and lives, Lord, that that your will be done. And Lord, we just ask you to be with our state and our county and our country, Lord, that you'll just send us a vaccine, a cure, 
uh, for this virus, Lord, and we know, Lord, that you can just lay your hands upon on the world, Lord, and just cure it all. Lord, we just pray that, that your will be done. Lord, we just thank you for all your blessings of life and everything you bestowed upon us. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. For our scripture text this morning, we will be reading from Isaiah chapter 9, reading from verse 2, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. And going down to verse 6 and 7, Isaiah writes, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. here this morning to kick off the Christmas season. Enjoyed listening to Ken and the verses and we always look forward to this time of year and doing our bluegrass Christmas songs. We hope you do too.
song is uh, really special, especially to a lot of our older people that, uh, like uh, Brother D. McKenzie, it's one of his favorites. Jimmy McCarter is one of his favorites. Ken really likes it. A lot of what we like to call, we know they're not senior saints, we call them senior legends. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, just listen to the words. Thank you very much. Appreciate you doing that. I don't think you have to be old to enjoy those songs <laughs> or a legend. Greetings, most of you, uh, by internet this morning. Let me invite you to take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 1, verses. 1 and 14, very familiar verses um, that we're going to look at this morning as we talk about surprises of Christmas, surprises of Christmas. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. We sure did. We had everybody in. Um, Elizabeth and Cody came up from Baton Rouge, and they went back home on Friday because Cody had to go to work on Saturday. And... Um, Julie and Ben and the boys are going to be heading back tomorrow morning uh, back up to Kentucky. And Beverly is with the boys this morning playing. We enjoy having them so much, but you know what? It makes old people tired <laughs> running around with those kids. But we'll sure miss them when they go home. We really will. 
Well, COVID is um, rising up again, I understand. And uh, I, I hope you appreciate your leadership here. They're trying so carefully to be very, very careful and protect uh, the brothers and sisters here at First Baptist Church in Decatur. Uh, so what's our response? Well, we just press on. It's called perseverance. You just keep on keeping on. Knowing that the Lord has everything well in hand and in his own good time, he's going to work everything out for our good. That's Romans 8.28. And so we trust that when it comes to COVID also. All right, let's look at the text. Uh, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. I won't have you stand. Uh, since there's so few of us here, I'll just uh, read the passage of Scripture for us. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then skip down to verse 14. From the, the Word, sorry, I lost it there for a moment. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. I imagine you've had many wonderful surprises during Christmas time. And when I use the word surprises at Christmas, automatically I would imagine uh, events come back to your mind. Let me tell you some of the Perkins family. When we lived in Colorado, there were many Christmases where we would have a white Christmas. I remember one particular one, we got bombed. And uh, lots and lots of snow came in on Christmas Eve. But I got to tell you, it was beautiful to see the white blanket everywhere. Another memory that comes back are the several times that we've had carolers come to our home and uh, sing Christmas carols to us. Sometimes we didn't know they were coming. They just showed up. And what a wonderful surprise that was. Let me tell you about one other surprise. Five Christmases ago, Ben and Julie told us they were expecting Hunter. Here's how they told us. Uh, they made a little announcement card and put it in a box and wrapped it up in Christmas paper and gave it to us as a present. And what a wonderful surprise that was. Uh, little Hunter came along. Uh, he's four now, but five Christmases ago, uh, we got the word. Well, the Christmas story brings some wonderful surprises too. And what I want us to do is consider this morning from our text some of the surprises, the wonderful surprises, the nice surprises uh, of Christmas. First surprise is this, and it is the identity of Jesus. If you will, look at verse 1 of John 1. John 1, 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The first surprise of Christmas is the identity of Jesus. Jesus was none other than God, the Son in the flesh. Look again at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John uses the word, Word, to describe the pre-incarnate Christ. Jesus, before he came to earth as a babe in Bethlehem. And so you can read the text this way. In the beginning was Jesus. And Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Now, now, we who have been raised in the church, we're familiar with this kind of language. Because we know, well, Jesus was God. But listen, listen, it is an astounding fact. If you'll take a step back and think about this incredible Truth that we Christians believe about Jesus. That Jesus was none other 
than God who came to earth as a little babe and lived among us. Incredible claim that we Christians make is that Jesus was God. Now think of this. Think of this, and it'll put, you, put it in context for you. On average, there are 200 billion stars in one galaxy. 200 billion stars in one galaxy. Now, with the Hubble telescope, we've been able to peer deep into the universe. And Hubble tells us that there are thousands of galaxies out there. Now, listen. Each of those galaxies will have, on average, 200 billion stars. Now, here's what we Christians hold as true that that little babe who came to us in Bethlehem about 2,000 years ago is the same one who created those billions and billions of stars. Incredible, isn't it? Jesus was none other than God Almighty in the flesh. Listen to these verses of Scripture. Colossians 1.15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. That's all a reference to the invisible powers out there. All things were created by him and for him. That's what we maintain as Christians. As incredible as it seems to us, this little babe who came to us born in a manger about 2,000 years ago was none other than the Lord God who created everything that there is. Listen to this other passage of Scripture. Luke 2, 11. The angel declared to the shepherds these words, Today in the city of David a Savior has been born to you, and he is Christ the Lord. The Lord. That's who Jesus was. The Lord God Almighty. Pretty astounding stuff. If you'll stop and just think about it a moment. Uh, so astounding that the religious leaders of Jesus' day couldn't wrap their mind around it. They just couldn't. They couldn't see how God could become a human being. And so they resisted it. Now, now note this. The religious leaders did not deny the miracle signs and wonders of Jesus, though. They did not. They did not deny that he had the power to cast out demons. They did not deny that he had the power to heal. They did not deny that he could do miracles and did miracles. Here's what they said. The only way he could do that was that he was possessed by Beelzebub, Satan himself. But they did not deny that he did those miracles and signs and wonders. They just couldn't get their mind around it. Even though Isaiah 9, 6 that you read just a little, by, a little while ago gave four titles of the Messiah. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Second one, Mighty God. Messiah would be God, but yet they still resisted. Even though Isaiah had told them that when Messiah would come, he would be God, they still resisted. Why? Because it's pretty incredible. Think about it. God became a human being, lowered himself and became a human being. Now think about it. That's really incredible. What's some of the most incredible things that you could think of in your life happening? 
Maybe one would be the University of Tennessee football team would <laughs> win the national championship next year. Pretty incredible. Well, what about this? What about when we open back up and have church again and allow everybody to come? What if 50 new people showed up unexpected that you'd never seen in church before? That'd be pretty incredible, wouldn't it? What about if this next week somebody came to you and said, I've been watching your life and, and, and I know your testimony that you're a Christian and you even act like a Christian. God's done something in my life and, and, and I need to find out how to become a Christian. Will you tell me how to become a Christian? Wouldn't that be incredible? As incredible as those may be that I just described, listen, even more incredible is this first surprise that I'm talking to you about at Christmas. Jesus' identity. He was none other than the Lord. Incredible as it is, none other than the Lord. Second surprise of Christmas is God came to us. The identity is the first surprise that uh, Jesus was God. The second surprise is God came to us. Look at verse 14. The Word became flesh and pitched His tent, tabernacled. The NIV says, made His dwelling among us. The literal Greek is tabernacled among us. Imagine, there was a time that God became flesh. And he made his dwelling among us. He took up his residence with us. Imagine, God came to us. Do you know every other world religion has a way for in their religion for the adherence of that religion to make their way to their God, to heaven, whether it's Buddhism or Hinduism or Islam or Judaism, but only in Christianity do you have God coming down to us. Now, why did He come? Why did God the Son come to earth? Here's why. He came on a mission. That mission was to save us from our sins. Old Hallmark card commercial. When you care enough, you send the very best. What's implied is the very best card to send is the Hallmark card. God cared enough for us to send the very best. Who's that? God the Son. On a mission. What was that mission? To seek and to save that which is lost. Who's lost? Every cotton picking human being. Every one of us are sinners, are separated from God because of our sins, and we know it. We know there's something deeply flawed within every one of us human beings, and we need someone to save us and fix us. That's why Jesus came. Let me read you a letter to Santa Claus. Dear Santa, there are three little boys who live in our house. There's Jeffrey, who's two. There's David, and he's four. And there is Norman, he's seven. Jeffrey is good some of the time. David is good some of the time. But Norman is good all the time. I am Norman. Now the thing is, that's a cute little letter, but Norman wasn't telling the truth. Because you see, Norman's not good all the time. None of us are good all the time. That's why we need a Savior. We need someone to come and change us on the inside, completely make us new on the inside, and save us from hell. And that's what Jesus did. In the last month, two 
dear men that I've had the privilege of pastoring have died because of COVID. One, I pastored in Colorado, and he moved to Florida. He died just this last week. The other, Steve, he um, was in the church where I was an interim in Arkansas. It's been three weeks ago that he passed away. Sad, surprising, shocking, as a matter of fact, when we got the word. But you know what? I know where both of those men are right now. Well, they're in heaven. Now, they were sinners, but you see, they latched on to Jesus as their own personal Lord and Savior. And I know because they trusted Christ as their Lord and Savior that they're in the presence of Jesus right now. For you see, Jesus came to rescue people like Tom and Steve. Sinners just like you and me who need a Savior and they latched on to Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Listen, my friend, if you're not a follower of Jesus, I want you to understand Christmas is all about Jesus coming for you. He eventually would die on a cross to pay for your sins. It becomes effectual for you. His death for you becomes effectual for you when you latch on to him as your Lord and Savior by faith. Third surprise, there's a plan. Look at verse 14 again. Verse 14 of chapter 1 of John tells us that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Now notice what he's saying here. There was a time that the word actually became flesh. There was a time that God Almighty became a human being, and he pitched his tent among us. He tabernacled among us. A specific time, Galatians 4.4 4 tells us that in the fullness of time, Jesus came. In the fullness of time. Now, I want you to understand what the Scripture is saying to us Jesus was born right on time. Not a day early, not a day late, but right on time. There was an exact moment in time where God became flesh. Now, what does that mean? What that means is that there is a plan. It's God's plan for the universe, and it is working out right on schedule. The COVID has not caught the Lord by surprise. It hasn't. He's allowed it, didn't cause evil, but he's allowed it for his own purposes which sometimes are hard to understand, but he has a plan and his purposes are indeed being worked out. I don't know about you, but just sometimes God exasperates you. This COVID exasperates me. And since he's king of the universe, he's allowed it. So I'm, I, I don't understand what's going on. I, I just don't understand God and his ways. But listen to this wonderful verse in Isaiah 55. God's ways are so much higher, grander, greater. They're beyond my understanding. How, how can a little person like me with such a small brain like mine comprehend what God's up to. I can't. I have to just step back and say, well, Lord, wow. I don't know what's going on, but I know you're in charge, and I know there is a plan that is being worked out. I know there is. You ever seen um, at the airport um, uh, um, a panel that will keep changing, the times will keep changing, Planes coming from such a way. It's ETA. Estimated time of arrival will be on that board. 
uh, plane from Chicago landing uh, at uh, Denver International Airport uh, at 4.30. That's the estimated time of arrival. Doesn't mean it'll get there just exactly at that moment. It's the estimated time. Listen, there's no estimated time of, of arrival when it comes to God. He's always just right on time. Never early. I wish he was sometimes, but he's never late either. He's always right on time. For our 25th wedding anniversary, we were living in Denver, Colorado, and decided that uh, I'd like to go uh, to um, uh, the Finger Lakes in um, upper New York State. And so several months before uh, we were to fly from Denver, uh, I got the reservations. And we were going to fly from Denver uh, to Cincinnati and Cincinnati up to Rochester, uh, rent a car in Rochester, and then drive down to our motel in the Finger Lakes region. And all that was worked out. Got to the airport on the day that we were to leave Denver International Airport and uh, got to uh, the counter to get my tickets, and the lady at Delta, oh, did I tell you it was Delta? You may never want to fly Delta again after I tell you this story anyway. Anyway, it was Delta. And uh, they said, uh, oh, Mr. Perkins, uh, your flight has been canceled. This was our 25th wedding anniversary. Flight canceled? Oh, but we put you on another plane. Oh? Oh, oh, oh yes, and you're not flying to Cincinnati. You're flying to New York City. You're going to go to JFK. And oh, by the way, the plane won't leave for five hours. <laughs> well, what do you, you know, it uh, almost drives you insane being in an airport for five hours, walking around. Uh, you know those moving sidewalks? They got a lot of those at Denver International. I, I rode every one of them several times, several times, just passing time. Well, we flew uh, from Denver to JFK. I wouldn't recommend flying into JFK ever. Uh, we, we got there really quick and landed, and we weren't in the terminal at JFK very long until we got the announcements that our plane was boarding, and we boarded the plane. But do you know we sat on the runway two hours? There were so many planes taking off and landing that we sat there in that plane for two hours. Well, finally, flew the short trip up to Rochester, got there at 1 o'clock, uh, got our um, uh, rental car and drove down to uh, where we had our motel. Motel folks were waiting on us. It was about 3 o'clock in the morning. They had us a nice warm cookie <laughs> ready for us. Anyway, uh, that was good. You know, aren't you glad God's not like Delta? Oh, by the way, did I tell you it was Delta? Never fly Delta. But God's not like Delta. God's always, always on time with his plan. Isn't that encouraging in the time in which we're in? With the COVID and also with the searching for your new pastor? Don't worry. Don't fret. God's got it all well in hand. He's accomplishing things through what's going on that we can't possibly understand now. Maybe 10 years down the road we can look back and say, oh, now I get it. Or it may be in eternity you'll look back and say, oh, I can understand God's wonderful plan. Just trust Him. The incarnation shows us God's got a plan. And everything is well in hand. Well, let me hasten on to the fourth surprise. And it is this. God understands what we face in life. John 1, 14 again. The Word became, what's the word? Flesh. In other words, He became a human being. Jesus became one of us. Now, He had to become one of us in order to die for the sins of humanity. He had to be a human being to die for humanity. But also, by being a human being, he understands 
everything that we go through. You ever been deserted by friends? Jesus was too, and he understands when we're deserted by friends. You ever been betrayed by a confidant? Hmm. Jesus understands what that's like to be betrayed by a dear friend. You ever felt all alone? Jesus understands because on the cross he was alone. Even his father turned his back on him when he became sin on the cross. Ever felt like people, you, you tried so hard to, to express what you're trying to say and people still didn't understand? Jesus understands. He knows exactly what you face as a human being because he became a human being. You know the difference between the word sympathize and empathize? Sympathize means, well, I'm sure sorry you've gone through all that. Empathize goes farther. Empathy says, I'm sorry you've gone through that, and I know exactly how you feel because I've been in that same situation. Sympathy and empathy. Not only does our Lord sympathize with our plight in life, but he also empathizes with our pride in life plight in life. It's so good when you go before the throne of God and you pour your heart out about how you were betrayed or how you were belittled or how lonely you feel and no one understands and no one cares. It's so good to know that that one you're talking to in heaven now knows exactly how you feel. And not only does he know how you feel, he can do something about the situation because, after all, he's God. I read a story many, many years ago about a Hindu man who became a Christian. But it took him quite a while to become a Christian. He could not understand for the life of him how God could lower himself and become a human being. He just couldn't get his mind around it. He just couldn't get his mind around it. And then one day he was walking down the street and he noticed an anthill. And he got down on his knees and he started observing the ants. And he thought to himself, I really would like to know what, what the ants are going through. And then all of a sudden it dawned on him. Oh! I understand one of the reasons why Jesus became a human being is so that he could understand what it was like to be a human being. Take heart, my friend. Our Lord, because he became one of us, truly does understand what we face in life. Well, those are the surprises, four of them that we've gone through this morning. Jesus was God. That's his identity. God came to us. That's the second surprise. We don't go to him. He came to us. There is a plan, and God really understands all we go through. Sometimes surprises are good. Sometimes surprises are not so good. The good ones we've talked about here, COVID's not such a good one. When, uh, let me tell you about a quirky one, though, that I had as I finish up this morning. Um, we were in Germany, the whole family. I wanted to take the family there because I'd been on several mission trips to Germany and such a beautiful country, and I wanted Beverly and the kids to see it. So we made a trek over there. Um, we were at the Frankfurt Airport uh, waiting uh, for the time to come so we could get on the plane to fly back to the United States. I had a few marks left. Now, marks are, are German dollars. Uh, now they're on the euro system, but, but this goes back several years, and so they were still using German Deutschmarks. And so I had a few marks left, 
And so I said to Beverly, Beverly, why don't we just use these? We're not going to be able to spend them in, uh, in the state, so let's just go ahead and use them here. And she thought that was fine. And I said, I think I remember uh, a McDonald's here in the airport. So I was walking around. I said, I'll go get it. And so I started walking around trying to find McDonald's. I couldn't find McDonald's. And then an idea came. I learned a little German for the trip. I was going to use my best German. And I was going to listen to the German back to me, and I was going to be able to translate. So I thought, well, I'm, I'm just about to leave Germany, so I better, I better try. So I had learned where is something or other. Uh, so one thing I thought would be critical to learn is uh, where's the toilet. And uh, so I learned wo es toilette. And, and I, so I figured I could put in another word like wo est where is McDonald's. So I went into this shop. They were speaking German. Went into the shop. Wo est McDonald's. I was so proud of myself, learning German. So I was ready for German. And you know what came back to me? Sir, you just go straight down the hallway, turn right, go straight on, and you'll run right into McDonald's. Well, that was a surprise. I expected German, but got perfect English back. Life's filled with surprises. Even when it comes to the Christmas story, there are surprises. Wonderful surprises. Jesus was none other than God. God came to us. There is a plan, and God really does understand what we face in life. You think about that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the good news of the gospel. That, Lord, you came to us. When we couldn't get to you, you came to us. Thank you. Thank you for dying on that cross to pay for every one of our sins. We're reminded of the plan. We're reminded of how glorious the plan is. And that we get to be part of it. Help us to remember at Christmas these good surprises at Christmas time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, you did. You did good.